the Buffalo Bills. New head coach, GM, no longer there. New GM after the draft. Quarterback, is he really going to be there long term? A lot of interesting things swirling around the Bills. And we have from ESPN.com, their NFL Nation reporter, Mike Rodak, joining us today. Mike, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Listen, I, I want to know how you're doing because this has been a crazy offseason. Rex Ryan gone, a totally different type of head coach. He seems like a no-nonsense guy. We know him from the Philadelphia area when he was here. And then after the draft, no GM. You replace the GM. It just seems like in Buffalo Bills land, I don't I don't know how the mafia is doing, man. They, they seem to be a little bit uh, lost for words at times. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of another reset. And this is the, the seventh time since they last made the playoffs in 1999 that they've essentially just pressed the reset button and started over. Um, so, yeah, it, it was a pretty crazy, I'd say, first four or five months of the offseason. Uh, you know, it's basically starting when Rex was fired right before the end of last season and then Obviously, Doug Whaley gets fired after the draft, the general manager, and they bring in Brandon Bean to replace him. So uh, at this point, I mean, it's I'd say it's calmed down to a point where fans are not exactly expecting very much this year. And I think they're okay with that. This is not like when Rex came in and he's standing at the podium saying his team's going to make the playoffs this year and fans are buying a record number of season tickets. This is, even though the, the Bills aren't saying it, this is pretty much a rebuilding year as they – kind of start over. So um, fans, I don't think, have the highest expectations. They're not expecting the Bills to go 3-13 and 13 or 4-12, and 12, but somewhere in the middle. You know, 6-10, and 7-9, 8-8 and, nine, eight and eight is probably where I think most fans expect them to be. And I think for at least this year, they're okay with that. This is going to be the fourth time they've had a different head coach in the last seven years, Mike. Is there any hope for Bills fans that Sean McDermott can be the guy who brings some stability to that head coaching job? I think so. I mean, I think there's a lot of fatigue uh, among ownership here. Terry and Kim Pagula have owned the team for about three years now, and they've already you know, had to hire two head coaches, Rex and Sean McDermott. And in addition to that, they also own the Buffalo Sabres in the NHL, and they just fired their head coach and their GM uh, over in this offseason too. So they just had to hire four new executives for their teams. I don't think they are going to want to hire anybody for quite some time. So Sean McDermott has two, probably at least three years to, to get something done here. Um, you know, fans obviously do have a level of anxiety about, you know, it's been 17 years out of the playoffs. We want to get in there. But I think they understand that there's there's going to be a, a process here. And that's exactly the word that McDermott has used. It's like the, the 76ers. You know, you've got to respect the process. That's the exact mentality he's brought into here. And um, it's funny, actually. I, I spoke to a Bills fan yesterday. He was, he's been a fan since 1974 and um, followed along with all of that and, and the entire playoff drought. And he said this was actually the first year that he's bought season tickets because Sean McDermott has not made those promises that Rex did. Uh, he likes his style. He compared it to Mark Levy, you know, the, the Hall of Fame coach who was here in the 90s. So there's some optimism, but I don't think it's optimism for something to happen right away. Mike Deshaun, uh, Mike, you just alluded to the fact that fans don't expect Buffalo to really be a playoff team this year, kind of in the middle, yet you got a guy like Tyrod Taylor in there who some would say management isn't all in on. Uh, the first step in any rebuild or any retool is getting a quarterback, and if you're in the middle of the pact again next year, you're not closer to getting one in the draft and you don't really have that much access to trade for one. You never see trades for franchise quarterbacks. So is it ideal for the Bills to kind of go in that route to say we're going to go in the middle and just see what happens when there's a question maybe at the quarterback position? Well, that was my my exact belief at the start of this offseason. We're talking about Tyrod Taylor, should they bring him back or not. It was, for me, you got to go one direction or the other. You either got to keep Tyrod and go all in, try to make the playoffs, or you got to really start from scratch. And I thought when they brought back Tyrod, my initial reaction was, yeah, they're going to be stuck in the middle. They're not going to get a high enough draft pick to get a quarterback. This is only in, will, will cost them in the long term. The thing is, though, um, they got a, a $10 million pay cut. When they when they brought him back, they brought him back at a discount on a restructured contract. So they, they scored a win there. And they also scored a win in the draft when they traded down from number 10 and they picked up the Chiefs' first-round pick next year. So um, if the Bills finish, you know, let's say in, in the bottom eight 
uh, you know, of draft picks. So they're, they're starting in the, in the top eight of the draft. And the, the Chiefs finish somewhere in the teens. There's a decent chance the Bills could package those picks together and try to move up to the top three picks in this draft. And, and maybe you're looking at a Darnold or, or Josh Allen or, or Rosen. So um, you, obviously you're competing with the Jets. The Jets aren't going to trade with you uh, if they're looking at Sam Darnold or one of those guys. Um, but there is a chance you can move up. So that is, I think, their move. If Tyrod Taylor is not the guy, I think that, that's going to be one of their options next year. Um, but they do just want to see uh, where where he's at right now. And if he has a good year, then I think there's a decent chance they could redo his deal again and, and try to keep him. We're talking with Mike Rodak, ESPN's Buffalo Bills reporter and analyst. You can follow him on Twitter at Mike Rodak. That's a lowercase m i k e r o d a k. Mike Rodak. Mike, with that being said, I'm one of the guys who actually believes in Tyrod Taylor and believes that the last two seasons wasn't really his fault and that it was more on the defense. With a guy like Sean McDermott coming in, who's a defensive head coach, without the rah rah and all the the hype that came with Rex Ryan. Is it crazy to say that Buffalo could actually get a wild card spot this year? Remember, they lost both games to Miami last year and had a real big meltdown against Oakland. Is it, you know, out of the realm to say that that could change this year and they could sneak into the wild card? I mean, I, I don't think it's it's unrealistic. Um, I think that would be their ceiling with this team is maybe a one and done wild card team. You know, you're not winning the division, and that's been their problem for for 17, 18 years now with Brady in this division. It's just there's no shot um, unless there's an injury to him. So you're looking at one of two wild card spots. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's there's some weak spots in the AFC where you don't know how the Broncos are going to do. You don't know about the Dolphins. You don't know about. Um, you know, even the Chiefs with, with their quarterback situation. So there is a chance there that if everybody stays healthy on offense, if, if Rashawn McCoy is a big year, if Sammy Watkins comes back and has a big year, if Tyrod has a good year, you know, the defense comes back from where it was with Rex and, and everything kind of clicks, then, then yeah, I think you can, you can get into the playoffs. But just top to bottom, I don't think this roster has the depth um, and, and the talent that at some spots receiver is one area where I think there's issues behind Watkins and, um, offensive line has not looked great so far this week. So there's some issues. Um, I, I do think defensively they could be better with McDermott, but, um, you know, the back end, it's basically a whole new secondary, too, that they're looking at. So it, it's going to take some time, I think. Speaking of the secondary, flipping over to the defensive side of the ball, the assumption was when Rex Ryan came in, the defense was going to take another step. Well, when Jim Schwartz left, Rex Ryan got there. The defense pretty much seemed to get worse each year. And now you have another defensive head coach coming in, Sean McDermott. What are the expectations for a defense that does have guys like Marcel Darius and Kyle Williams? And then you had the fortune of having uh, Tredavious White be available at 27. Some people had him going in the top 25. When he slipped past 25, some people were surprised. So you do have some talent on the defensive side of the ball. Very true. Um, I think that that's that's probably your strength. What you mentioned before, the defensive line. Yeah, I think it, the best case scenario is that you go back to a 2014 when the outside had the best defensive line in football. They had either the, the most sacks or the second most sacks in the league that year. And we're talking Jerry Hughes and Darius and Kyle Williams. And now they have Shaq Lawson along that defensive line who they drafted in the first round last year. So those guys stay healthy. They have good years. You're probably right back in that category. But you do have issues at linebacker. You know, let's remember this this Panthers defense with, with McDermott. They had Luke Keekley every year that he was there. And there's nobody even close to Keekley on this roster. I mean, they drafted Reggie Ragland last year out of Alabama, but he doesn't have the speed and the range that they really need at that spot. Um, and there's, I mean, Lorenzo Alexander is more of a pass rusher off the edge. They don't have some of the pieces in between. And I think there's, there's some weakness at safety as well. Number two corner is a question. So... Um, for all of it to, to come together for McDermott, you know, I, I think it's going to again take a couple years to you know find which players fit his scheme and, and draft some of them. Um, you know, Leslie Frazier is also involved in this defense as a coordinator, so um, it's a whole new setup than it was under Rex. It's a, it's a very basic four-three look as opposed to what Rex was running, which was hybrid three-four, four-three, more of a complex defense. So it's going to be different. Um, Again, I just think that it might take a couple years for for them to find the right pieces for the puzzle back there. 
Mike, is this a put up or shut up year for Sammy Watkins? He hasn't always been healthy. He's coming to the end of that rookie contract. Is this the year that he needs to show the Bills that he is going to be available and he's going to be dependable for them? Yeah, exactly. That's that's kind of what this um, this decision to not pick up that fifth year option next year uh, basically meant is that you know if you're going to stay healthy this year and you have a great year, then I think you know the Bills would probably look at the franchise tag or maybe look at a big contract extension, and it would probably be justified. You know the way he if he had a great year this year. Um, but if he doesn't, and you're looking at another injury play year, which would be basically three in a row for him, then they're probably letting him walk, or at least you know trying to re-sign him at a discount. So that was the the pressure that the Bills put on him um, by declining that option. Obviously, they lost some leverage on their end, but I think that's a risk they're willing to take um, because he simply just hasn't been on the field and, and hasn't been healthy enough for him to really make a difference, um, at least anywhere near some of the other guys in his draft class, you know, Mike Evans and Odell Beckham and Landry and some of those other guys. So definitely a, a make or break year for him. And, and through four practices of the training camp, he has been healthy and he's made a couple plays here and there. So that's uh, that's more than it has been the case in the last couple of years. So that's, that's a positive step for them. We've been speaking with Mike Rodak. He's ESPN's Buffalo Bills reporter and analyst. Mike, appreciate the time today. And, you know, hopefully sooner than later, it might not be this year, but hopefully sooner than later, uh, the Bills can break the curse of Rob Johnson eventually. Thanks, Mike.